Hello everyone and welcome to Jumperman Tech where we specialize in HVAC for do everything DIY and today we have a follow-up video for this York package unit. Thank you to everyone tuning into Jumperman Tech. Today we are doing a follow-up on this York package unit. The issue here is that we had a very very low back pressure and our evaporator coil was freezing but our head pressure seemed to be about normal. When we first turned on the machine, I noticed the head pressure started out really high and then it came down. So they had me questioning if there's a restriction in this system or possibly maybe non-condensables when the head pressure goes up and down like that, there could be a possibility with that. But right now, when I inspected the evaporator coil, well, in the last visit, I noticed that it was really like corroded and I'm wondering if we have airflow issues to where that's why our back pressure is low. So my idea for today, so let's start with the easiest thing. And the easiest thing is gonna be getting to that coil. Let's see what that thing is about. Now let's remove these filters. Let's get a better access to this coil. This coil is definitely dirty and packed. Look at that. We gotta start with this airflow. Things like this are definitely packed up. Look at that. Oh man. Heavy, heavy, and heavy dirt. For sure. We're gonna have to clean this whole thing. I want as much access as I can get for this evaporator. That thing is definitely plugged up. I don't think we're gonna get access through there. All right. All right. Let's see, maybe we could take get this top off, make sure we're clear on both sides. So this side looks clean, but it's the side that the air comes in, which is this side where it gets super dirty plus this is a hallway unit this takes care of about nine floors for the hallways we also have this right here this is where fresh air comes in this side the louvers and everything is closed off but yeah this thing is packed up let's definitely start with the thick stuff man look at that sure there's dust all over through this coil this entire unit even the top all this stuff we don't want any of this dirt eventually getting into this coil it's packed so while we're brushing this stuff down we're also vacuuming all the dirt that's picking up. I also have a little air compressor here. So we started off by brushing down the coil and vacuuming that up. Our next step is, well, what I would like to personally do is blow out the coil from this way out and see if any dirt gets out of there before we wet down this coil because if there's dirt inside, it's all kind of going to get trapped just like that. So well, let's try to blow it out and see if any dust comes out. Let's check to see if dirt comes out. There's definitely some dust coming out. The issue is in places like this, it's all bent up. So it prevents airflow. And look, as soon as you brush it down, the thing is literally rotting apart. This is literally parts of the coil.
today we're using the Calbright Plus evaporator and condenser coil cleaner. We got this container here. We're gonna pump it up to pressurize it and we're gonna apply it on the coil. All right, let's apply the chemical. While we do this, we're gonna do both sides. I like to hit both sides of the coil. You wanna try to get it deep inside there. Let's start from this side. You see water coming out? Yep. Yeah? Got water coming out? Yeah. Right, that's the idea. We want to push the water to go through so we clear these ways. Want a good amount of pressure through there. Not much, but something. All right, watch out from there. All right, well, we're just gonna keep going along. Let's get rid of the soap. And let's also try to clear this dirt out. You know, we don't see much. I don't see anything coming out the other end. This thing must be packed. On this side. Now you see a little bit here. really the smallest amount this coil must be seriously packed it'll be hard to watch this thing all right let's start with the outer layer and then we're gonna try to push something through this is gonna be tough okay so that's the coil we got definitely got dirt on top I need to brush that off. Let's get a brush. But we're not making, we're not getting water across. And if we are, just barely. As far as water, this is how we're refilling. much there you see all right we got a little bit of water passing through Ooh. flashing me though we're little by little we're getting across the other side got all that soap basically we're gonna be here all day trying to unclog this thing Although we were mainly here for the evap cleaning, let's give this a quick rinse. Let's see if we get some dirt coming. I'm gonna empty out these two buckets. It looks dirty. For sure. Yeah, this thing is clogged up with dirt as well. You see water coming out from the yep. top? Yep. All right, this is light dirt. We're shooting water through. See if you guys can see the water. See the water shooting through? The oil coil doesn't do that. Let's just give this thing a quick rinse. See, that's what I want to see through the coil. I'm 
place. Watch out. All right, you can let go. Let's get this back in place. Let's start it up. And we'll see what's going on. Pretty sure we don't need other repairs here, but we have to start with at least a cleaning of the machine that we can get a better understanding. All right, we just started this unit. Our back pressure went up 20 pounds. That's a big deal, 20 pounds, but I can still see the compressor is like freezing up a bit. Partially at suction line. So you see wherever it's not insulated, it's freezing up. But we went up 20 pounds for that back pressure. That, that coil was definitely plugged up. But we have further issues here. We have a very high subcooling. It could be that this is overcharged. So maybe somebody came in here and saw low pressure and maybe they added refrigerant, but that didn't do it. But I would definitely want to scale this in. So there's definitely going to be another follow up here. We can't let it run like this either. All right, guys. So with a little bit of research, I went downstairs into the hallways and I found that the supply ducts were all closed. That's what led me to believe that possibly that the fire alarm system had shut down. And it actually did. So what happened is if the fire alarm system shuts down, it closes all the supply dampers. So because they're actually motorized, they have these things like this. This is an actuator. So it electrically opens and closes the damper. So that's why we had poor airflow. Once we got that, back open we had a tremendous airflow and our pressures changed a lot and this is we got the head the back pressure up to 142.6 but look at the head pressure it was 540 pounds with almost 60 degree subcooling so that's leading to tell me that that we're overcharged i don't know who worked on this previously but this machine is 100 percent overcharged so this is actually the following day we're here to get this thing back in order but i definitely wanted to share that with you guys definitely was a tricky problem we had an airflow issue it's good that we cleaned everything plus now we found a true issue of why so we got that all open now we're here to bring that circuit back online fully today but i'm going to end this video here and this video is going to be a separate one so if anyone found this video interesting or helpful please drop a like comment and subscribe as I come out with new videos every week and I'll catch you all next time.